All right, we are back at it here. Haven't done a video in a while, but we are ready to go in chapter eight now. So we're doing lesson 8.1, all right? And this lesson is all about polygon angle measurements. So we're gonna talk about interior angles and exterior angles and things like that. But first we need to review a few terms. So first off, I have a list here, you can kind of see all the way down, of different uh, numbers of sides and the name for that shape. So a three-sided figure, we should know by now is called a triangle. Four-sided is a quadrilateral. Five is a pentagon. Now stop and take notes as necessary on any of these that you don't know. All right, you might forget some of these. All right, six is a hexagon. Seven is a heptagon. Eight is an octagon. Nine is most commonly known as a nonagon, although there is this other eneagon. Uh, this is more of a Greek term. This is kind of a partially Greek with the gon part and partially, I think, French. But we're going to refer to it as a nonagon in our class. Ten is a decagon. Eleven is an undecagon. Once again, this is another one that has another name, sometimes called a hendecagon. We're going to use undecagon in our class. Twelve is a dodecagon. And then once we get to 13, they do have some special names past 13, but I'm not going to worry about memorizing all those. So we're just going to call it a 13-gon, and so on. You get to a 20, we can call it a 20-gon. Uh, 20 does have a special name. We're just going to call it a 20-gon, and so on, and you can go to whatever number you want after that. All right, so make sure you know all of these names of these uh, different types of shapes, all these polygons, because those will show up in questions. And if you don't know how many sides it has, that means you're going to get things wrong. Okay, so copy down what you need to. Make sure you know all of those. Some other review terms. Equiangular and equilateral. Keep in mind that equiangular means that all of the angles are congruent. All of the angles are equal in measure. Equilateral, all of the sides are congruent. All of the sides have the same distance to them. We're going to focus more on this one in this lesson today, but this is an important one. Regular. This says both equiangular and equilateral. So all of the sides are congruent and all of the angles are congruent to each other. Okay, convex. This is one we're gonna focus on in this lesson as well. Convex, if you remember our definitions from before, if you were to draw the shape and extend all the sides, none of the sides would enter into the polygon. Or if you were to draw the shape and connect any two interior points with a segment, that segment would remain inside the polygon. The other version is concave. Okay, we're not gonna deal a whole lot with concave in this lesson, but concave, if you were to extend the sides, then at least two of the sides would enter into the interior of the polygon. Or the other definition was that if you connected any two interior points with a segment, the segment could go outside, just in case you kind of forget what they look like. Convex shape looks something more like this, where a concave shape looks something more like this. Using that definition, if I extend all of these sides out, then none of the sides would go in. If I pick any two points inside, connect them with a segment, that segment cannot go outside. Here, if I extend this side here, and then I do it again to this side here, those would go inside the shape. And if I picked this point, like a point up kind of in this uh, top right corner and a point in this bottom left corner, and it connected them with a segment, that segment would go outside the shape. So convex and concave, if you've forgotten what those mean. All right, a new shape, diagonal. So here I have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, I have a hexagon, all right? It's not regular, it's not equilateral, it's not equiangular, but it's, it is a hexagon, but a diagonal. A diagonal is a segment that goes from a corner to any non-adjacent corner. Remember, adjacent means next to. So these, this corner is already next to this one, it's connected by one of the sides. This corner is also next to this one, it's connected. But a diagonal would run from that corner over to that corner. Or you could run from here over to there. Or you could run from here over to there. So that one corner has three diagonals. All right, and if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. You can't connect the diagonal back to the same corner. You cannot connect it to this, that's connected by a side. And you cannot connect it to this, because that's connected by a side. So that takes out three of the possibilities. So it just leaves these three over here. But we could do that. You know, we could connect here and here and here. All right, and then we could go to this one. We could connect down to here. We've already connected back to there. We could connect down to here. And you could draw a lot of the diagonals in there if you wanted to. I'm just going to leave it at those three for right now. But a diagonal is a segment that connects to non-adjacent vertices. All right? 
Next, an exterior angle. We have talked about this before as well. Once again, we'll review this. An exterior angle, remember, is not this angle. Okay, that angle is over 180 degrees. We are not gonna talk about angles over 180 degrees in geometry right now. Okay, so that's not what we're talking about. What we are talking about is that if you extend the side and you have this angle right here, it forms a linear pair with the interior angle. And a linear pair, two angles that when together they make a nice straight line, they share a common ray here, all right? These two angles together add to equal 180. Okay, this is an exterior angle. Now you could have extended a different side and you could have gone here instead. It doesn't matter. Those are vertical angles, so they are congruent. All we do is pick one at every corner. So if I actually drew a shape, I'll just draw a pentagon here, and I extend one spot at every corner, extend one of the lines at every corner, I get one exterior angle at every corner. Okay, so that's kind of what it looks like if I extend them all out and I put one exterior angle at every corner. All right, it kind of looks like a pinwheel almost or something like that. All right, but these are exterior angles. There are five of them, one for every corner. Okay, all right, so those are just some review terms, except I think diagonal is a new one. But those are terms that you need to know as we move into this lesson. All right, so now let's take a look at our new information. So the first thing we have is theorem 8.1. Theorem 8.1 is the sum of the interior angles of a convex polygon. Okay, we're not gonna do concave. It gets a little more difficult to think about an interior angle of a concave polygon. So we're just gonna do interior angles of a convex polygon. Sum means that we're going to add them all together. All right, so I have a, a picture here. We start with this one. We already know the answer to this, I hope. Okay, you should know that the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. Okay, that comes from our triangle sum theorem. And now if we move down to a four-sided shape, a quadrilateral, okay, the sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral is 360 degrees. Now you may know that, um, you may not. Um, if you think about a rectangle or a square, you should understand that it has 490 degree angles. So that's 360, all right? But there is another way to do it as well, and that's by drawing a diagonal. So if I draw a diagonal here, I know that these three angles add up to 180 degrees. And I, if I do the same thing here and here and here, those three angles would add up to 180 degrees. And when I put these two together, it gives me the whole interior angle on this corner. When I put these two together, it gives me the whole interior angle here. And then this is by itself, this whole interior angle, and that one's the whole interior angle up there. So the total is really just two different 180s. So that's 360 degrees. So let's move to a pentagon. We can do the same thing. So we'll draw some diagonals. One there and one there. We could have done it from any corner. Right? You just draw from one corner, you draw the diagonal. So this triangle is 180 degrees total. This triangle is 180 degrees total. This triangle is 180 degrees total. This interior angle and this one and this one all added together give you that big interior angle. This one was inside just that one triangle. This one plus this one, right down here, these two added together gives you that whole interior angle there. Up at the top, just that by itself is an interior angle. And then over here, this angle in that triangle and this angle in that triangle together give you that interior angle. So now we've taken care of all five interior angles by adding up the three triangles. Now so three times 180 is 540 degrees. All right, so now let's think about how this worked. I had three sides, but I only had one 180. So three sides, but one 180. Down here, I have four sides, but I have two 180s. Here I have five sides, but I have three 180s. All right, hopefully you're kind of noticing a pattern. The number of 180s is two less than the number of sides, one 180, three sides, so that's two less. Two 180s, four sides, so two is two less than four. Three is two less than five. So what does our formula look like? Well, we take our number of sides, we have to do two less than that, so we subtract two, and then we multiply by 180 degrees. And that is a formula that you need to memorize. 
That's your formula to find one, sorry, the sum, to find the sum of the interior angles of any convex polygon. So if I ask you to find the sum of the interior angles of a, oh, let's go with a undecagon. Okay, sum of the interior angles of an undecagon. All right. So, formula, n minus 2 times 180. n for an undecagon is 11. 11 minus 2 times 180. 11 minus 2 we know is 9 times 180. If you need to use your calculator, you can use it, but you get 1,620 degrees. If we add up all of the interior angles of an undecagon, we would get 1,620 degrees, okay? So that's our first theorem, theorem 8.1. Now, theorem 8.1 has something that kind of goes with it. The book doesn't talk about it a whole lot, but I do want to expect you to know it, and that's how do you find one interior angle of an equiangular or regular polygon? Now, why we say or regular? Because regular means equiangular and equilateral. So if it is regular, it automatically includes equiangular. However, it doesn't have to be regular. It can be equiangular without being equilateral. All right, you could have something like a rectangle in this case. Okay, it's got the four equal angles, but not necessarily the four equal sides. Well, this is pretty easy actually. We know that the sum of all the angles is n minus two times 180 degrees. So if I just wanna find one of them, then all I have to do is divide by my number of angles. That gets me from the sum, the total, down to just one angle. And the number of angles should match the number of sides. So we divide by n. Okay, pretty basic. All right, so let's take a look at this, uh, an example. Let's find one interior angle. Okay, find one interior angle of a regular, or we could say equiangular here, a regular hexagon. Alright, so we know that hopefully that a hexagon has six sides. So we're going to fill our six into our formula. Six minus two, so six minus two, times 180 divided by six. So I have that written down here. Six minus two is four times 180 over six. Four times 180 is 720 over six. And then finally, that gives me 120 degrees. So one interior angle of a regular hexagon it has to be 120 degrees. Okay, that's how you use that. It's not really a, a theorem that's in your book, but it is related to theorem 8.1, and I do expect you to know it. So you need to know this formula, n minus 2 times 180 over n. That's to find one interior angle of an equiangular or regular polygon. Okay, pause, take a break if you need to. We're going to get moving with the second theorem. And once again, a very much related concept. And we'll do five examples and we're done. All right, here we go. Theorem 8.2. The sum of the exterior angles of, once again, a convex polygon. We're not going to do this for concave. Um, you can talk about it. It's a little bit more difficult just because the way a concave polygon's exterior angles work, they get a little complicated. So we're just going to do this for, con for convex polygons. All right, exterior angles. Remember, we have a shape like this. And when we extend the sides, we get this angle. And if I extend this side, I get this angle. And if I extend this side, I get this angle. And if I extend this side, I get this angle. And then finally, if I extend this side, I get that angle. So I want to know what happens if I add those five angles together. And it's actually very, very, very easy. Let's say that you're walking around this. Let's say you start right here and you start walking this direction. And when you get to here, so this is person walking, they get to here. If I can get this to there. They have to turn this many degrees. All right, that's the measurement of that angle. It's this turning concept. So we get to here, we turn. In this case, it looks like, I don't know, about 80 degrees or so. Okay, they get up to here, they start walking farther, they get to here. Now they get to here and they stop and they have to turn again. Okay. And they start walking some more and they get to here and they have to turn again. 
okay, and then they come down here and so on, and they turn one more time. So they're turning, if you kind of show it with arrows, they're turning this way, and when they get up here, they're turning this way, and when they get over here, they're turning this way, and when they get over here, they're turning this way, and then they get to the bottom, and they turn this way, and finally they get back here, that was our starting point. Well, if you think about it, they came here and they just kind of walked like this and they kept turning and turning and turning and turning and turning and turning until we got back to here. And if you did that really, really, really fast, like kind of like if you were running around a, a baseball diamond or something, you know, first base, second base, third base, back to home, maybe you're trying to hit a inside the park home run or something, the outfielder kind of bobbled the ball. You're, you're not going to run here, stop, turn, take off again. You're going to kind of round it off. So if you think about what that looks like, if you start to round it off as you hit all these corners, it looks like a big circle. And that's really what happens. As you turn, you turn yourself around in a big circle. All of your turns together just turn you a full circle, which we know is 360 degrees. That's it. Doesn't matter what kind of shape you do. If you did, uh, like I said, a baseball diamond, that's only four, that's a, a quadrilateral. You would turn 360 degrees to get all the way around that. If you, you know, did it around a, a a 12-sided figure. You'd still turn 360 degrees to get all the way back to where you started. So it's not really a formula. It's just that the sum of the exterior angles of a convex polygon is 360 degrees. There's no n, there's no multiplying, it's just real simple. It's 360 degrees. You just need to memorize it. Okay, you need to memorize the other formulas, but here you don't even have to do any work. One of the easiest questions I'll ask you all year, so please don't miss it. All right, let's look at the related question. One exterior angle of an equiangular or regular polygon. Once again, we can say regular because regular already includes equiangular. Well, we know from what we just talked about up here that the sum, the total of all of the exterior angles is 360. So that means we're gonna start with 360, but now I need to get it down to just one angle. Well, we know that there are n number of angles in a polygon in matching the number of sides. You can't have five angles with six sides. You have to have the same exact number of angles and sides. So all we have to do is divide it by n. And that's our formula. 360 divided by n. All right, we'll look at a couple examples of this uh, in just a second here. Okay, so right now you have four formulas you need to memorize. I'll bring back the first one. To find the sum, the total, if I add, of the interior angles of a convex polygon, we use this formula right here, n minus two times 180 degrees. If I want to find one interior angle, as long as my polygon is equiangular or regular, now that automatically makes it convex, by the way. You cannot have a concave equiangular polygon. All right, so we take our total, which was n minus two times 180, and then we just divide by n to get it to one angle. All right, the sum of the exterior angles, and this is theorem 8.2, if you didn't notice that earlier, the sum of the exterior angles of a convex polygon is always 360 degrees. Does not matter how many sides it has, it's always 360 degrees. And then finally, finding one exterior angle of an equiangular or regular polygon, you just take that 360 and you divide it by n. All right, got five examples we're gonna do real quick, and we're done. So, number one, find the sum of the interior angles of a convex nonagon. All right, so I want you to try that real quick. You can pause the video, do it real fast, and then just restart. So once again, I want you to find the sum of the interior angles of a convex nonagon. All right, you should have done this already. If you haven't, stop the video. You're gonna hear me keep saying this until I'm convinced that you guys are actually doing it, all right? So, sum of the interior angles, what was that formula? Okay, think through formulas, look them back up if you need to, but eventually you need to get them memorized. It's N minus two times 180 degrees. All right, well, what kind of shape did we have? We had a nonagon. How many sides did a nonagon have? It had nine. So we're gonna put our nine in here. So nine minus two times 180 degrees. Nine minus two is seven. So seven times 180 degrees, and that equals 1,260 degrees. Okay, it's pretty simple. All right, let's look at another one. Number two here, find the measure of one interior angle of a regular dodecagon. 
okay, one interior angle of a regular dodecagon. So pause the video, try this one real quick. All right, hopefully you have this done by now. Let's take a look at it. So our interior angle sum, our total was n minus two times 180, but we know we're going to just find one, so we have to divide by n to finish it off. Okay, what was our shape? Our shape was a dodecagon, okay? Keep in mind, do, plural, or sorry, it's like dos kind of, it's like two deca, like decade means 10, so two and 10 together is 12. So we're gonna put 12 in everywhere I see n. Okay, so 12 minus two times 180 over 12. That gives me 10 times 180. Get my degree symbol in there, over 12, which is 1800 degrees over 12. I'm gonna divide that and I'm going to get 150 degrees. If you ever get an answer over 180 for one angle, you did it wrong, okay? All, all the angles added up can equal all kinds of different numbers, okay? But remember, in geometry, we're just gonna focus on angles that are under 180 degrees. We'll get into angles that are over 180 degrees in some other classes, all right? But for now, we're just focused on angles that are under 180. So when it says one interior angle, we gotta make sure that this answer is under 180 degrees. Okay, let's go to question three. Find the sum, okay? We're gonna add them all up of the exterior angles, excuse me. <coughs> oh man, sorry about that. Find the sum of the exterior angles of a convex hexagon. Okay, sum of the exterior angles of a convex hexagon. All right, so once again, pause the video, do that one real quick. Yeah, that one you should have had in no time at all. All it is is 360 degrees. You don't have to do any work for that one. If you forget why, go back and rewind the video about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes ago. All right, number four, find the measure of one exterior angle of a regular heptagon. Find the measure of one exterior angle of a regular heptagon. So once again, pause the video real quick, try that one. All right, you should have done that one by now. Let's take a look at it. We know that all of the exterior angles together equal 360 degrees. We divide by N. All right, so 360 degrees divided by, all right, it was a heptagon, heptagon. You gotta remember that that has seven sides. Seven doesn't go into 360 very well. If I try it, it's gonna give me 51.42, and then a bunch of other decimals, 428517, just kind of keeps repeating like that. I told you many, many, many times we don't want you rounding off decimals unless we absolutely have to. So I'm just gonna leave my answer just like this, 360 degrees over seven, okay? It's a little weird, but we could figure out what it is if we really wanted to. It's just a little over 51. All right, last one. This one's a little bit different, okay? If the measure of one interior angle of an equiangular polygon Notice I didn't tell you what kind of polygon. If the measure of one interior angle of an equiangular polygon is 135 degrees, what kind of polygon is it? Okay, so I'm gonna help you get started on this one. So let's think through our measure of one interior angle formula. Remember that was N minus two times 180 degrees over N. That was the formula to find the measure of one interior angle. Well, in this case, though, I don't know n. This is not n. This is actually the answer. You know, so it says is. Remember, is in math equals. So this equals 135. All right. I don't know what n is. I'm going to solve for it. So this has to equal 135. Okay. Go ahead and pause the video now. And I want you to solve that algebra problem. All right, you should have done this algebra problem. However, if you're stuck, give you a quick hint, cross multiply, cross multiply, cross multiply, cross multiply. What do you mean, Mr. Oates? Put it over one, do your cross multiplying, use your distributive property. All right, so some of you might need to pause the video now and retry that one because you forgot how to solve something like that. So if necessary, pause the video one more time, do your cross multiplying, use your distributive property and solve this. 
All right, by now, everybody should have this done. So let's look at what happens when we cross multiply here. We cross multiply here, we get 135n. Okay, 135n equals. When we multiply one times the 180, it really doesn't do anything. I'm gonna do the distributing in my next step. So 180 times that n minus two. All right, so now I'm gonna distribute 180 times n minus 180 times two and I still have my 135n over here. Okay, let's subtract 180n from both sides. Gives me negative 45n equals, I have a negative sign right here, don't lose it, so negative 360. I'm gonna divide both sides by negative 45. The negatives cancel, the 45s cancel, the negatives over here cancel, and that gives me n equals eight. Now, I've solved the algebra problem, but I haven't answered the question. The question was, what kind of polygon is it? N, remember, refers to the number of sides. So what kind of polygon has eight sides? Hopefully you remember, I can't spell. Hopefully you remember, it's called an octagon. And there's our answer. All right, so that's it, that's lesson 8.1. Quick review, real fast. Um, make sure you know all your polygon angle names. Make sure you know the terms equiangular, equilateral, regular, convex, concave, diagonal, and exterior angle. And then our four formulas, I'm gonna show them to you one more time. So for the sum of the interior angles, all of the interior angles added together, was this formula right here, n minus two times 180 degrees. If I wanted to find one, interior angle of a regular or equiangular polygon, then I take that same formula, I just divide it by n. Over here, the sum of the exterior angles, remember sum means adding them all together, the exterior angles of a convex polygon is 360 degrees, and then finally, one exterior angle of an equiangular or regular polygon is 360 degrees divided by n. Get those formulas memorized, make sure you're taking good notes because you will have a video quiz on this, then next time we have class.